everyone i welcome you all to today's topic decodified session today in this session we are going to talk about national automated fingerprint identification system and afis let's see what is the sequence we are going to follow so we shall be discovering why it is a news then we shall be knowing about national automated fingerprint identification system followed by the prelims and means based practice questions for you all before i move any further in my discussion i want your attention towards the polity and ethics foundation course 2023 announcement which began day before yesterday you can still take admissions in these courses the admission window is open for few more days and in fact there is a course of public administration optional which is going to begin on 25th of september which is also going to be taken by nitin shiv hari sir who is the founder and director of analyst ias to inquire further about the details of all these batches you can connect with us on the given numbers and also visit our office in the old rajinder nagar market now let's get started with the topic why it is a news the union home minister has inaugurated the national automated fingerprint identification system nafis so what is national automated fingerprint identification system all about nafis is developed by national crime records bureau ncrb at the central fingerprint bureau cfpb in new delhi the project is a country wide searchable database of crime and criminal related fingerprints the web portal or web based application functions as a central information repository by consolidating fingerprint data from all states and union territories in april this year madhya pradesh became the first state in the country to identify a deceased person through nafis or national automated fingerprint identification system what are going to be see one utility we have just discovered that okay a person is dead and is unknown who he is so we can identify it through the fingerprints but let's understand the utility exactly it enables law enforcement agencies to upload trace and retrieve data from the database in the real time on 24 into 7 basis it would help in quick and easy disposal of cases with the help of centralized fingerprint database so this is how it works there is a repository it can help in border control it can help in public safety e passport see e passport is also coming up by the end of 2022 the announcements are being made by the government then latent fingerprint matching voter registration national id healthcare and welfare so it could be having a multi purpose utility so how does it work national automated fingerprint identification system assign a unique 10 digit national fingerprint number nfn to each person arrested for a crime this unique id will be used for person's lifetime and different crimes registered under different firs will be linked to the same nfn national fingerprint number the 2020 report states that the id's first two digits will be that of the state code in which the person was arrested for a crime is registered however it is also going to be followed by a sequence number by automating the collection storage and matching of fingerprints along with digitizing the records of fingerprint data that is currently available with the crime records bureau the national automated fingerprint identification system will provide the much needed unique identifier for every arrested person it will be included in the cctns that is crime and criminal tracking networks and network and system database as both are connected to connected at the back end what both are connected the national crime records bureau and crime and criminal tracking network system are connected at the back end now what has been the history behind this project it was started upon the recommendation of national police commission in 1986 the central fingerprint bureau 
first began to automate the fingerprint database. It began with digitizing the existing manual records through India's first automated fingerprint identification system, AFI, in 1992, called Fingerprint Analysis and Criminal Tracking System, FACTS 1.0. The latest identification or iteration, FACTS 5.0, which was upgraded in 2007, was considered to have outlived its shelf life already according to a 2018 report by the ncrb that is national crime records bureau thus needed to be replaced by the new system of national automated fingerprint identification system and afis the fingerprint as a crime fighting tool let's understand about that so a system of fingerprinting identification first emerged in the colonial india where it was tested before it spread to Europe and beyond. At first, it was used by British colonial officials for administrative rather than criminal purposes. William Herschel, the chief administrator of the Hooghly district of Bengal, from the late middle 1800s onwards used fingerprinting to reduce fraud and fraudgeries. It then aimed to ensure that the correct person was receiving government pensions, signing land transfer deeds, and mortgage bonds. Anthropometry, the measurement of physical features of the body, was used by officials in India, but was soon replaced by a system of fingerprints thereafter. So this was the history, all the nitty-gritties, and the key highlights and details with regards to NAFIS. Now, the question we had today in topic decodified session was, consider the following statement, Schedule 7 of the Constitution enumerates the taxation subject provided under List 1 and List 2. Number 2, there is no head of taxation in the concurrent list. Number 3, Union and State have the concurrent power of taxation. You were supposed to pick up the correct combination of options and your answer here is A, 1 and 2 only. The statement number three, that is union and state have concurrent power of taxation, that is incorrect. Now, let's look at the prelim space practice question for today. What is the position of a right against self incrimination in India? Your options are A. Legal right available to citizens only. B. Fundamental right available to citizens only. C. Fundamental right available to any person. And D. Neither fundamental nor legal right. You are supposed to put the correct option in the comment box below. And I shall be discussing the answer for this particular question with you tomorrow. Now, let's look at the main practice question for today. Keeping in view India's internal security, analyze the impact of cross-border cyber attacks. Also discuss the defensive measures against these sophisticated attacks. You will be answering this particular question in 250 words and send in your answers to us on WhatsApp to get them reviewed. This is it for today. I shall see you again tomorrow. Till then, take care. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining in.